There you go. Oh, all righty. All righty. All right. Now here yeah. we are. Uh, did you have any, any, um, I know we talked about wanting to, like, I, I was sort of like, again, you want to try to be like, okay, why don't we do like a Godfather three coda thing? But you know, <laughs> life happened and I got like, you know, I only got maybe about a half hour into the movie just r- around the time when Vincent, you know, kills those goons, uh, with, with, you know, Bridget Fonda running in the background. Uh, that's as far mm-hmm. as I got with my, like, you know, stop and go kind of like write everything down analysis of that movie. But I mean... <laughs> We don't. We don't have to. We don't have to. You know, strictly talk about. You know, we can talk about anything. We don't have to talk about movies. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do have something humorous that I wanted to uh, share with you. Please. Yeah. So I saw this in the news today. Mm-hmm. Cocaine Bear has found its cast <laughs> as a slew of names that have just boarded the movie include Kerry Russell, <laughs> Ray Ray Liotta. <laughs> And it'll be directed by Elizabeth Banks. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hot off of uh, making her, um, you know, her Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels. Yep. Yeah. 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 She's going to become the uh, the American female Uva Bowl. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. And it's based on a true story. Cocaine Bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just a. Uh, the true story in question refers to an incident that occurred in 1985 mm. when a drug smuggler had died after ejecting from his plane while flying over Kentucky. <laughs> so this, hap- this happened in this country. Good Lord. Uh, at the time, he was smuggling around $14 million worth of cocaine. <laughs> Jesus, my and the gosh. entire batch landed in a grizzly bear territory. Oh, Lord. Locals found a bear dead of an overdose, surrounded by 40 open packages of cocaine that it had licked clean. Oh, God. You know... Uh, I'm just imagining some Tony Montana type thing. Oh, you know, my God. bear snorts all this, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> you want to play? You want to play? Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, I had to share that because I was like, "Oh my!" <laughs> did you? Did you? Okay, well, this was today. You found this article today. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, now I know what to talk about. At least I had it open the show. Well, I at least needed to tell you about it. Yeah. So well, yeah. that that definitely this really happened. Like the the, the cocaine, the bear died of a cocaine overdose. This is. Are you serious? Yeah. Co- <laughs> cocaine bear. Cocaine uh, bear. I, I'm sure that this is probably going to be more like they send some people to go find the plane and it's almost like the edge. <laughs> okay. um, but except the bear is like, you know, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine bear. Like, let's let's this is this almost feels like a like a follow up to Pineapple Express. <laughs> 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 I'm not a James Franco fan. I'm not. You know what? I mean, I like James Franco and and oh god, the other dude. What's his name? Uh, god, I'm blanking out. What's his name? Who's Seth? Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I, I like them when like during their freaks and geeks years. I don't. I don't like them as much anymore. I think they're they're kind of jerks. But you know, that's just me. But hey, Cocaine Bear. <laughs> <laughs> who's in it? Who's in it again? Ray Liotta uh, and who else? Ray Liotta. Yeah, let's see. We have. Let me uh, grab this again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kerry Russell. <laughs> okay. Kerry Russell. Um, Ray Liotta. Uh, O'Shea Jackson. Hmm. Uh, and let's see here. Hmm. Jesse Tyler Ferguson. I think he was on uh, Modern Family. Hmm. He's uh, the redheaded guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Um, Oh, I got to say this name right. The guy who played uh, Han Solo in the Solo movie. Oh, Aaron um, uh, Aaron Reich. Reich? Aaron Reich. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, so it's a star. It's, it's a it's a B level, except for Lady Liotta. <laughs> to be it's a B level cast. Oh man, uh, did you see Charlie's Angels? No, no, I did. I did not. I. 
there's a you know some i sometimes will circle back to movies that mm-hmm. i had no real desire to see at one point yeah um hell last night i watched a uh oh what was it called uh, escape room oh wow uh because they have like a second one coming out and i'm like that's a weird <laughs> premise as like is it just saw with like escape room <laughs> you know and it's interesting because i i see the uh i, I got it from the library mm. and i'm looking at the back at the cast <laughs> and the end like you know you have like starring so-and-so 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 and then end and it's like you know and uh it's the uh the the the, the dutch actor um Yurik von something or other uh <laughs> who had been in um uh, not a lot, not a lot of American films, but I know he plays the villain in the movie Black Hat. Wow! And he was in the American version of uh, uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, sure. He play, yeah, he plays uh, the uh, the rapist therapist. <laughs> or no, no, he's not a therapist. <laughs> he's um, <laughs> the he's a uh, social worker. Well, rapist uh, therapist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, you know, they couldn't get anybody famous who's <laughs> stateside, so they go to get this like, I don't even know who the hell his name is out there <laughs> from from Denmark to play the villain. So yeah, that's r- not r- xenophobic. R- no, <laughs> but you know what? I mean, oh, that the other day. Speaking speaking of revisiting movies, the other day, you know, did you see uh, the Ice Road? It's on Netflix with Liam Neeson, the new Liam Neeson action movie. Uh, I did not. <laughs> so yeah, because we were we were sitting around the dinner tables. We were, we were having dinner, if we were uh, my wife and I were you know we're having dinner with my parents and 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 <laughs> we're like, what the hell are we gonna watch? Because we're just you know like to have to hit the TV in the background. Of course, Liam Neeson's always a safe bet. You know, just violence at the dinner table is always a safe bet with Liam Neeson. And that's <laughs> the we, like we dad my dad watched Ice Road, so we're like, oh, that's perfect. You know, why don't you put it on? And um. See now, do you want to know spoilers or or not? Because I, it's it's ice road. I don't know if you care. <laughs> I I don't mind you talking about it. Well, uh, well, the whole the whole premise of the movie is essentially like we. It's like it's like it's like sorcerer and and like he's a fear, but in Canada. Okay. And uh, they have to transport. Uh, Lawrence Fishman's in the movie too. And they have to transport these critical pieces because of a mine collapse uh, in the Northern Territories, I guess. So when I'm watching this movie and Neil, Liam Neeson has this um, has this handic- mentally handicapped uh, brother in the movie, which and they have this weird kind of like um, mice and men thing going on. And... I thought, oh, this is actually kind of refreshing because you see these things and Liam Neeson usually does it, you know, like he does it solo for the most part. But it's nice to see him have a sidekick. At least that's what I was thinking (laughs) with this. (laughs) And and by the end of the movie, I I, I was wondering, wait a minute, there's a lot, not not the whole um, allusion to, uh, you know, Weakies of Fear and, and, and Sorcerer aside. I kept watching this. I'm like, wait a minute, what does this remind me of? And because the you know the, the the cast gets narrowed down because of you know treachery and you know double crossing and so forth, it reminded me of uh, Cube. Remember Cube? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and I'm I lean over to Sabrina. She's never seen it, and I go, I won't be surprised if you know his brother, and there's a there's a a, a female, a woman uh, who's also a truck driver. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they get towards the end because you know, that's sort of how cube played out right like at the very end of cube if i remember correctly it was the woman who helped um get the the the, the sort of the savant out of the prison and the very end of yes. the movie the end, very end of the movie is him walking out and you see him like walking out towards the light and that's it 
it doesn't play out like that, but I was like, oh shit, I, that's, I guess it was an interesting callback to Q, which I haven't thought about in years and years. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, I, I seem to remember, what was that, that... Uh, there was, I, I know it had a very, it had, a cube had a very interesting beginning to it. Yeah. Everybody uh, waking up. Well, I, I swear, I think the first scene of cube is like, they have like, a, it, it's almost like a, a, a trap where the guy gets, uh, mm. well, to put it blunt, to put it bluntly, he gets, he gets cubed. <laughs> right, right. Like in cooking terms. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, with some kind of device, it breaks them up into little cubes yeah yep <laughs> he gets cubed you've been cubed yeah uh <laughs> and i was like well that's that's a wild beginning uh it's like that scene it's, in, it's like that scene in resident evil remember that with the lasers yeah uh, which i i swear they came they were around the same time yeah and then, yeah that's one of those things you see that coming at you you're like oh crap yeah <laughs> That's, yeah, he's like, that was on that guy's face in Resident Evil, by the way. He was like, oh, <laughs> shit. It's over. It's over for me. And uh, you know what sucked about Resident Evil, though? I mean, amongst many things, I'm a big Resident <laughs> Evil fan. No, really. I mean, I'm a big Resident Evil fan. At least I was growing up. I, like, I, was, I, I love Resident Evil, playing the games, discovering them, right? Watching the movie was such a letdown. And this is from, the, this is from Paul W.S. Anderson. This is before, was this before or after Paul Thomas Anderson got bigger, you know? And before, because he, Paul W. S. Anderson also directed Mortal Kombat, which is probably one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah it's probably one of my favorite video and, game movies. Yeah, and Event Horizon, and, and which I'd never seen. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. The Shout Factory had just put out a a new like a new release yes. of, uh, of as Resident Evil, and on the boards, really? all the fans were going, "Oh, please let this be the extended Hell Rape version." <laughs> <laughs> which uh, okay. it, it's been one of these things where like for the uh, o- almost like the clown that cried or the oh, lord you're comparing that to this <laughs> i'm like yeah, yeah exactly like it, yeah, it, long running was like oh my god we that we got to see like the nc nc 17 NC 17 version of, of, of resident uh, evil of, of uh well of, of event horizon of, oh jesus yeah oh and i'm like Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, uh, yeah, I, I saw the, uh, I saw that the uh, the cover for that. I remember seeing Sam Neill's face. I'm like, okay, I know I want to watch this movie, but do I really want to watch this movie? Should I watch Possession first <laughs> before I watch this movie? Because <laughs> yeah, there's there's like the Sam Neill like Hell trilogy, right? Well, I guess if you want to count, I don't know if you want to count Jurassic Park in that Purgatory Saga, but I know there's like Possessions in there. Um, like, do you want to count Dead Calm too? I don't know, but he also did. Uh, uh, oh my God! In the Mouth of Madness, in this. So he's like he's yeah. not a, he's no stranger to horror movies, which you wouldn't you wouldn't think yeah. about it. You wouldn't think about it unless you actually were like we're watching these films and you know we're paying attention a little bit. Like oh Sam Neill again, like what? Like, well, the first American film he did, he plays uh, Damien. In, uh, no, it's right, third Omen, Omen, right. Yeah, the third Omen movie. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Speaking of which, dude, we should talk about Richard Donner. Yes, yeah. I, you know, I said to my wife, oh, Richard Donner died. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, like, the guy, he hasn't, he's actually been around. He just hasn't worked on anything, you know, hands-on in years. Was his last movie Timeline, the Michael Crichton adaptation? Was that the last one he I did? I believe it was 16 Blocks. Oh, I don't even uh, know about that. Yeah, it's... Um, I, can't, I actually forgot about Timeline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the last... Richard. Um, yeah, that's the last movie that I remember like, paying attention to. Yeah, they're, uh, they're Bruce Willis is a cop who has to get Mo's death to uh, to his court date, mm. and there is ah. basically all these other cops won't let him are, are trying not to let Mo's death make it to uh, huh. make it to the court. I do remember this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Wow. It's almost like a, it's almost like a gauntlet movie, right? Uh, right. And uh, it's it's good. It's a nice, solid movie to be his last film. Mm. It was also like 
15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you figure, you know, if the guy was in his, like, mid-70s, maybe he had one more in him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean, he was very vocal in a lot of, like, talking head type of things with uh, uh, talking about other films. Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, uh, shitting on the... Uh, uh, the Salkines about the, the first Superman movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always love the story he tells about the the script for Superman. Mario Puzo? Um, oh, yeah. Which, if you look at who wrote the script for Superman, it's like five people. That's uh, right. That's but, right. That's right. I remember that. Uh, doesn't, doesn't that come up in the uh, in the opening credits? It was, it was like, you know the with the with the with the, with the titles. I remember I remember watching it in the theater back at uh, oh my god, was it the Ziegfeld? They had like this uh, double feature of you know Batman eighty nine and Superman, and Superman oh. Superman totally stole, stole the show, totally. It was like it was like, <laughs> and it was the first on the on the double billing too. I'm like I'm really here for Tim Burton's Batman, but then you know after sitting through both movies back to back, I'm like no, I had, I definitely had a better better time with Superman. And <laughs> no, sir, I mean, sir, it's, it, I mean, not to change the subject too much, but but isn't it interesting? You you it, 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 depending on how you watch something, it, you just get a different experience. It's it's. I remember when we were, uh, we were just watching Batman, and it just didn't feel like a Batman movie. It felt like a Joker movie because of Nicholson, right? How can you like his presence is so huge, especially in the, you know the Ziegfeld on the big screen like that? I mean, they're both event movies, right? But Superman was mm. Superman was just a good time. Anyway, yeah, I remember I, I, I did watch Superman, um, at least the opening on YouTube fairly recently, and it was just, I think the, 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 the writing credits were just like a paragraph. <laughs> yeah, because it's, what it is, it's a story by Mario Puzo, and then it's like screenplay by Mario Puzo, hmm. David and Leslie Newman, uh, hmm. Tom Mankiewicz Jr. Jeez. Robert Benton, who is uh, a writer and director, uh, hmm. uh, was that it? Chris Warren maybe it was more, but see. apparently the original like Mario Puzo script uh, was like the size of three phone books. Jeez Louise! And as Richard Donner says, he goes, "Yeah, there was this plot about." Uh, 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 about this uh, organization wanting to uh, kidnap the Pope, uh, <laughs> Jesus. and uh, you know they had uh, it's like and Lex Luger, you know Lex Luthor's in it. And he's a, and he's like and there's a supporting character in it called Superman. <laughs> We're gonna turn this down, Mister Puzo. Just a just a hair, <laughs> just a hair. Maybe lose a few chapters. So, Vatican. He always has to put the Vatican in the story. <laughs> well, hey, we're not talking about Godfather Three yet. Hold off on that. Hold okay, on. <laughs> right, right. We'll we'll we'll, sh- we'll 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 save the Superman talk for Godfather Three. <laughs> no, you can talk about Superman, but um, hey, you know what? Here here's a here's a good question that that I feel like I've always wanted to ask you this. It's about Mario Puzo. Have you ever read any of his scripts? Like, have you ever sat down and like gotten the Godfather or? Uh, or even Superman, for that matter, like that that original draft that he wrote for Superman, and you started reading through it. No, no, no. <laughs> Me neither. That would be that wouldn't be that wouldn't be uh, that would be a little fun to read, though. I think for the first like, you know ten pages, and then you're like, "What is this?" <laughs> I, I will tell you an odd situation. Please. Of, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it was the. I don't think it was night. Uh, what was it? It was, it was a it was a um, uh, George Romero script, mm. uh, and he has a very distinct way that he even formats his scripts. Hmm. Uh, it's like a cross between a like a um, uh, like a news or or a, a documentary script. Yeah, have you ever seen the way they lay those out? Ah, uh, vaguely. You know, it's like instead of the say the traditional screenplay thing of mm-hmm. you know, well, uh, uh, the uh, 
location, mm -hmm. uh, description, character, dialogue. dialogue. It's like the location might just say day or night, but might not have anything else. Hmm. It might also not say day or night. Hmm. And then the description is written like prose. Hmm. Oh, wow. And the dialogue, the, the character names are all on the left side of the page. Mm. And there's semicolon or a, a colon. colon. And then halfway across the page is the dialogue. Ah. Which is very similar to the kind of ways you do a, like a news story. Interesting. Uh, script. Except usually with the news story... On the left side of the page, you also have a description of the image being shown. Hmm. Hmm. Well, As I was reading this, I'm like, wow, I mean, for one thing, it's really hard to read because... Yeah. <laughs> it's... it's he, he he tends to write very, like, flowery stuff. I oh, see. <laughs> well, is in regards to the prose action description, as it were... Where he would just in a way, yeah. yeah, you know, like I, 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 I'm, you, I, you probably remember from uh, some of the ways I, I usually used to write what wasn't happening. Right. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that's important in a movie. Right. White wrote what isn't happening. Well, that's you know, like I was at the, uh, uh, two two of the best things I ever read in action description in a script. One was from The Shining, and the other one was from... Lethal, lethal Weapon. Weapon. I remember the Lethal Weapon one. Yeah, very vividly. Yeah. You shared that with me a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, I have to paraphrase it because I don't remember it exactly, but it's like Riggs and Murtaugh pull up to a house that I'm going to buy. buy He's a hit. He's a hit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because that immediately puts it inside your head. Exactly. It must be a nice house. Exactly. 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 Well, what, uh, what was The Shining? What was The Shining um, uh, action it's, description uh, like? The description is uh, uh, Jack is not writing. Yes, 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 yes. Did, did I? Okay. So, did you did you uh, ever get a, a glimpse of how? Um, not not early on, but maybe after. I want to say two thousand and one. Definitely for Full Metal Jacket, I think, and I don't know about The Shining as much, because I don't, I, I, like, like, I, I actually read The Shining script. I read, like, I did, I did I ever tell you this anecdote? How like how Sabi and I went to to London uh, a few years back, and I was like, okay, from me in London, I'm not, how when I, how often am I ever here? Right? Let me go and go to the visit the Kubrick archives. Did I ever tell you this? No. Oh man. Oh man, so it's in the University of London, uh, I think Arts Center. You have to sort of walk down a few blocks from the Thames, and it was a good walk. It was maybe twenty, thirty minutes from um, maybe the uh, what's it called the the you know the, uh, the the oh god what was it the not, not the Ferris wheel the um, uh, help me out here the, um, the I think it's called the Millennium Eye or something like that you know the big um, not merry-go-round. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking I about? I know what you're talking yeah. about. I don't know the name. I've never been to London. Neither, well, I've been there, I've been there <laughs> once, and it's more... <laughs> it was I've great. I've seen movies. I know what you're you talking, know talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, so we walked the way, and we, we, ended up getting, uh, we ended up getting there, and we had to go to the basement of uh, the University of London um, uh, Art School, I think it was. And I had to make a, an appointment ahead of time. And when I go down there, you know, it was like this sort of uh, very kind of hygienic, air-conditioned office space, right? And there were computer banks all over the place. And then you go through a set of doors, and then you see like uh, like a small uh, staff. And there was a gentleman at the left side behind a desk, and he goes, "Oh yes, can I help you?" And I said, you know, my name and who I was here for. And he very, I remember him very vividly asking, like, "And what are you interested in, Mr. Kubrick? Like, what's what's your interest in, Mr. Kubrick?" And I said, "Oh, I'm just a fan. I'm a film student." And I thought, you know. If I'm here, I might as well just uh, dig in, as it were. And he was like, oh, yes, yes. So well, hold on. What is it that you'd like to see? And I go, uh. <laughs> so I, I already had like a few, um, like, 
ideas of what I wanted to uh, see. And one of them was the Shining screenplay because it, it was located. It's located there. And it was his director's copy, too. Like straight up. Do you remember um, the Kubrick Archives book? Yeah. They have a photo. Yes. Uh, they have a photo of 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 his screenplay of his master of, of evidently his you know his his directing screenplay like that's the one he would reference, right? Yeah. Uh, and compile because he kept rewriting and writing and writing over and over again, right? So I set up an entire like sort of afternoon to you know just look through stuff, and I said enough time like you know what okay I'm gonna look through the Shining screenplay because I like can you imagine it's like you know as a as a you know. Uh, film person you're like oh shit i'm touching something that kubrick touched this is so cool right and you're like looking through the pages and you're reading it so i I read through it all and what's so funny sean is that i can't remember the formatting i just remember reading it (laughs) (laughs) and it was you know it's co-written with uh diane johnson and i thought what was so what was so cool i think i might have mentioned this to you before but in the scene with with um uh grady and jack in the bathroom you know, uh, you know the. Uh, 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 oh God, now I'm seeing. Blank. I, I'm terrified. I can't remember movie dialogue now that I'm getting older to recite on the fly. But you know the scene I'm talking about in the red bathroom. Yes. He he gives Jack a poem at the very end of that scene. Like he, he, he sort of cuts out, but before it cuts out, Grady slips Jack a poem and he reads it, and it's sort of like this weird incantation. And then I remember I remember reading that Jack slips it into his pocket. And he's like bewildered by this. He's like, what is this? And I thought that was like, shit, you don't, I've never heard that before. I've never, like straight up. I mean, if, if, if they ever like, you know, if you ever get your hands on it or you see it online or something, go to that scene. Cause when I read that, I was like, what? Like, I wonder, I wonder if they ever shot that. Interesting. Yeah. Nah, yeah. 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 And then uh, I also looked at, um, Oh shit! What else did I look at? Barry Lyndon stuff, probably. The mo the, what was really interesting too was because um, I was running out of time there, and I was like, uh, what, "What should I? What should I ask for?" And I, I guess it was like, no, you know what? Let me ask for some of the invoices to Eyes Wide Shut, because apparently they had a huge stack of just just invoices from when the film had to be digitally um, uh, uh, censored. Oh, <laughs> remember that? Yeah, and yeah. and uh, this they bring everything out in like these gray trays, like every little thing. I guess is maybe like in I don't know if it's in cold storage or what. But you know, you go in there, you ask for you, you tell them what you were interested in seeing. They say, "Oh yes, please wait a moment," and then give it a few minutes, and then they come out and they come out with pushing this cart, and they have like a series of you know you know gray trays, and they give you your gray tray, and has like whatever movie history is in there, and. Man, it after Kubrick died, to see all it's so funny. I'm talking about invoices. I I couldn't I couldn't have seen anything else, right? I couldn't have like watched you know, you know Hal's dialogue, you know handwritten notes or something for 2001, assuming it's there. <laughs> I'm looking at invoices, right? And but no, it's really telling because um, you'll see things that Kubrick approved. You see his, see his initials and his chicken scratch handwriting, and then you'll see a lot of stuff by Leon Vitali, you know. And you see, yeah. and, and and you see, and you see, um, uh, he signed off on like on a whole ton of stuff. It's like he was like you know directing the movie from, you know, you know post you know Kubrick's death or something. Because you see a lot of notes by him, and he signed off on a lot of the um, digital effects uh, that were implemented. Given given what I saw in the notes, it's, it's really interesting. It's really kind of like, and, and that wasn't even one tenth of what they actually have. Like they actually have a lot of Kubrick's books that he, you know, I think he got. I think maybe the short timers was in there for you know, Full Metal Jacket, um, oh, okay. but a lot. You know, I, 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 when you scroll, you can look at this online. Like even from here, you can just go on to like the Kubrick archives or whatever, University of London, I believe, and then they'll show you a list of what you can access. And this is a few years ago, so I don't know how much of this is like uploaded online. But a, there's a lot of stuff, of course, on Napoleon, and oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So that was like one thing that was like, okay, I don't have time for this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. I have to cut my losses. I read the Shining screenplay that, you know, Kubrick and people consulted as they were making the movie. That should be enough. <laughs> but it was a cool experience, though. Really cool experience. You should do it. If you ever get like a chance to go out there or something, just do it. 
Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He says. Damn, man. First, I gotta, I, I gotta get out that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can just maybe do a trip together or something. Just like head out there. Like, okay, Sean, we're in London. Let's go see the Kubrick archive. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What are we waiting for? Oh my god. And uh, you know, I, 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 I don't kid when I say this. It's like, Sean, we should like you know go out to these you know these filmy fan type of things, and. You know, like going to like going to LA to see like going to like see something at the New Beverly now that you know things are reopening or something maybe one day, but now I hear that Tarantino bought another theater. I don't know about yeah, this. What, what yes, was this? He did. I don't remember the name of it, but I saw that in the news. The, uh... Uh, Zarina told said this to me the other day. I forgot what it, what she said. Huh? This is killing me. Let me look it up. Let's see, are you gonna read the um the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood book? I'm thinking about it. Me too. I, I, <laughs> Me too. I was I was really just kind of holding out for the uh, you know the twenty hour version of the movie. <laughs> it's for me. It's already too long. I mean, I I, I loved it, but I, at the same time, it's like that 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 part with the you know with with you know his his spaghetti western in the movie. Eh, that was a bit too long for me. Too long. Too long. I remember. Sitting in the movie theater watching it with my dad, I'm like, "This is great," but that 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 this uh, this section is way too long. <laughs> this is what... you know, personally, I loved all of it. Yeah. I actually, I I wish the movie was like nine hours long. I just it... like hanging out with people. True, really... <laughs> true, especially like you know, you know, driving around with Brad Pitt, listening to like you know, you know, late '60s Los Angeles radio. Nailed yeah, it. That, Nailed it. Which which apparently that was. The, the the day that that's supposed to take place it's it's all correct no way really yeah they i guess they have radio like archives. archives huh or it's it's correct enough right right <laughs> no shit i didn't know but, that uh, yeah i had a i had an interesting experience watching that movie or <laughs> oh god I, I didn't know what the ending of it was mm. i i and it was really interesting because we got all the way to the end of the movie. And then when the title comes up and it says Once Upon a Time, you know, dot, dot, dot in Hollywood. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to cry. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, because it's it, the, the movie is not supposed to be taken as fact. It's supposed to be like a, mm-hmm. you know, it's unfortunate. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, we wish this would have happened instead. Yep, yep, yep. You know, dogs uh you know uh i love the I, lo- I love brad pitt's dog in that movie oh yeah <laughs> what was it was it was her was it it was a her right was it lucy the name i'm not sure um, it was um oh my damn it uh oh my god should i have to look this up i don't want to look this stuff up now nah, it's a, i should know that <laughs> no worries uh because my, my wife's not a big dog person. No way. And I'm like, nah, she, she loves cats. She's a cat girl, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I like cats, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, watch a movie, they come and they like hang out on your lap, and you're like, okay. Right. <laughs> I, I, can, I, I can do dogs and cats. I, I'm more of a dog person myself, but I actually never lived with a cat. Lived with a dog, but not with a cat. The thing. <laughs> what what uh hold on a second you know what i I've, it's interesting can how big how how seismic was that impact with with the, the manson murderers and charles manson uh at the time because i'm reading it's interesting i'm reading the ultimate evil by maury terry and it talks about you know the sons of sam Right. And how there's a con- there's a connection uh, through Scientology in the process church to um, the family. Right. And it's interesting how like it's, it's weird how how so much of the stuff that I used to happen to read circles back to Manson. Like, I know it was a big deal when it happened, of course, given the nature of the crime. But it, it's still, it's shocking. But how. Like, in, in regards to this guy's like quote unquote power, 
Like, was he really that much of a Svengali or, or, or I don't know, that, that, that you've it heard about? It may have been a combination of... The drugs? Ver- <laughs> the, the drugs, um, <laughs> some pretty impressionable people. Sure. Uh, the culture at the time, you mm. know, it being a very attractive thing to be, you know, commune. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, a lot of times, what happens is you, you'll, you'll, you'll latch, you'll, you'll like latch on to a group and have that, you know, the community, and you want to have a sense of like mm. loyalty and family. True. And everything becomes right and. It's us and them. Mm-hmm. And I, right. It could explain a lot of that. Uh, and sometimes people go a little far. And I'm not just talking about True. you know that. And sure, sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's 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 a universal um, sort of framework or template, I guess. That they that human need for um, to be connected, right? And then once you're so in over your head. And you feel like you're so, uh, you know, accepted, maybe that you just go ahead and just do whatever. I mean, that's that that's cult, right? That's that's just sort yeah. of culture. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been I've been not that I've been wanting to read about this stuff. Is this that it's so interesting how these like these like these connections that go back to to, especially Manson. I mean, I I, I didn't follow any of this stuff when I was growing up. You just hear this boogeyman living in this prison, and you know, when you sit down and you, oh yeah, this this actually makes me want to ask you if you want to do like true crime because I know I know you read a lot about that and looked into stuff like that as well. If you want to do like a true crime podcast or something, like our episodes at least. I would, but you know, uh, all the women do that now. So do they really? Uh, <laughs> do they really? I, I don't think there's any crimes left. I think all the women have taken uh, taken all the crimes. <laughs> Wait, what are you what are you talking about? <laughs> Are you serious? It's like mostly like a female thing? Or are you like you're joking? I it just you know it, uh, uh, I used to listen to some true crime podcasts. Yeah, and one listened to ones different than me. Oh, uh, and I would think, they even did like a sketch on uh, on Saturday Night Saturday Night Live, Live where um, what was it? I think it was for Netflix <laughs> where if a woman's got like a good you know like a nice free Friday night. She's getting into some comfy clothes, <laughs> getting a bottle of wine, and gonna watch some true crime. crime. Oh god! Oh lord! Yeah. Yep, yep. Weird, like weirding their boyfriends out when they uh, when when they stop by. Like, what, what the hell? You, what the hell are you watching? What, is, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my! God. We watched. Um, speaking of Netflix, we like this was like a while back. What, what the hell? Did we watched the summer of uh, the. Um, that's oh my god! The. Uh, it's on the Sam, the um, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker one. Oh, yeah. Did, did you watch oh, that? Oh, my. I did. Um, I also knew some things about him prior. Whoa, what uh, was it? Well, no, I just did. I, I remembered hearing about, uh, I, I mean, he's a very sad individual because he used to, yeah. uh, you know, he used to attack a lot of, like, older women because they were, you know. Yeah defenseless i mean that's a very it's it's a very cowardly thing yeah it's really sick uh but i remember hearing about how he was caught Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. thinking that is really funny isn't it (laughs) holy crap like i hear the description where where uh, there's a couple of different accounts but i remember hearing the thing where like there was a a picture of him in a window of the store that he walks out of (laughs) mm-hmm And there's a man standing there, and he's looking at the picture, and he looks at Ramirez, and he looks back at the picture, and looks at the Ramirez, and Ramirez just runs. Wow. And the guy just, and just, the guy, like, with a bunch of people run after him. Right. And he tried to, like, pull a woman out of her car, and yeah. steal the car, and then everybody just started dogpiling on him. Holy, yeah. And it was like, it was like the scene uh, from... Avengers Infinity War where they're all like teaming up on Thanos to get the glove off. I was like, look at that. I, I said that. I said to Anne, I'm like, look at that. They're doing the Richard Ramirez to him. <laughs> oh, God. That was good. Holy crap. 
And then what's of course I got a laugh. That got a big that got a good laugh. You know, <laughs> it was what's I mean, I only know as much as what the Nef, I, as much as the Netflix documentary showed, which probably isn't much at all, of course, but I, I thought it was astonishing that, you know, he was in for the death penalty. He acting like the rock star, he shows up to, you know, Mr. Charisma, shows up to his own trial, right? And then gets a death penalty. Doesn't even die from that. Like, like, what, like, what, what, how did, like, was it because, was it California got rid of the death penalty and he sort of just stayed around? Is that what happened? Wait, what was that? I'm sorry. You, like, you cut out a second. Oh, there. I did? No. Yeah. Well, I was wondering, like, that he didn't even, he didn't even, he wasn't even executed. Wasn't he, like, uh, uh, given he the death penalty? In, yeah, he died in prison. He died in prison. Uh, yeah. Um, I think he died from cancer. That's so. That's so. That's so weird. You figured that he was on death row. Yeah. He just never got around to doing anything like, about it. Should we like kill Richard Maria's now? Nah. <laughs> we'll let him. Let, let him. Let him. Let, let, we'll put it off on it. We'll, we'll put him off on it. We'll, let's, wait, let's just wait. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> Damn, this is terrible. Oh my god. And then you got <laughs> Jesus. I mean, come on. Oh Lord. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The uh, we I when I was working, uh, I had to travel around a lot. I used to listen to sure. a lot of uh, audio books, and mm. uh, I, I'm I'm a lazy reader. Uh, <laughs> I don't think this is the first time you've ever heard that about me, but I'm such a lazy reader that I like to listen to stories. Some audio books are actually told better than I read them. Mm. I can see that. Uh, I, like Steve Martin had like his biography, mm. uh, and he reads it, and he also plays the banjo during it. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and I don't play the banjo, and I don't sound like Steve Martin, so some of it doesn't come off as well. Nah. Uh, what was the <laughs> other one that I... Oh, Barry Sonnenfeld. Yes! Uh, I've been wanting to read his book, too. Oh, his book is really good. I will advocate that the way he reads his book, because I did do it, it was another audio book. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that he he heightened it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Barry Sonnefeld, call your, your mother. mother. <laughs> when I saw that, uh, when I saw that cover, I'm like, what? He wrote a book? They should make a movie. A Based on that book, no uh, way. I, I, it would be. I, I don't even. I don't even know like the best way to describe the tone <laughs> of it. But, uh, I mean, they kind of already <laughs> made movies like it before. But just the 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 whole the the book should be about the relationship with him and his mom, and not as much with. His career, you know, the entirety of his career. Right, 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 right. <laughs> wow. So, but it, uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, no, I got to check that out because his career is interesting. Of course, like the, the little that I know about it, like he was a cinematographer and he just got into directing. And yeah. was was it was was his first film? Um, did he direct it? Was it Adam's Family, or was it something before that? The no, first film he directed was. It was Adam's Family, was it? Adam's Family. Was it really? No way. Yeah, I think it may have been. Huh. Uh, yeah, it, really crazy. Uh, you know, the, the 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 fact that he came from photography and then moved into cinematography. Photography. <laughs> Talented dude. Yeah. Yeah, very seriously. Much. And a big believer that uh, if a cinematographer directs a movie, hire another DP. Don't don't do your own uh, cinematography oh, yeah wow it's because you you'll you'll think like uh like a dp and you won't think like a director, director. Mm. And the other way around too you kind of need to have the separation a little bit of a yeah 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 <laughs> you know in a weird way that makes me I, I don't know remember okay heaven's gate right like how how you know um who was the DP on that? It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, oh God, help me! See, I, I gotta get a crib sheet or something. Timino, Timino. He he didn't do his his own lighting on that movie, did he? For Heaven's but Gate. You know what? You you keep going in and out. Do I really? 
Okay, yeah. well, I'm sorry, Hair Man. I don't know if it's my headphones. You're asking about Heaven's Gate. Yeah, uh, exactly. I was asking about Heaven's Gate and, and, and Michael uh, uh, Chimino doing his own uh, DP for that, his own uh, photography for that movie. I don't think so. I think it was just directing, right? Well, that, I, I'm sorry, Juan. You're, you're turning oh, into a you're, robot here. Oh, no. I'm still That's connected here. No, no, no. Can you hear me, Sean? I can now. Okay. All right. Well, maybe maybe this is a sign right. to me. Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate. Who Go. was the, who who was the DP for Heaven's Gate? It wasn't Michael Timino, I, was it? No, I believe it was uh, Valmosh Sigmund. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. No way. Okay. When are we going to shoot? When the cloud is just right. Let's just wait. Let's just wait for the clouds to be right, and then the clouds become right. Five hours yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, like. Um, Oh my God! What was the what was the production studio that was funding this movie? Was it Carol Co? No, that was uh, United Artists. United, oh, United Artists. I mean, where they're like, uh, Mike, we can't really pick up on this movie. It's all it'll be all right. It's gonna make millions of dollars. Don't worry, we'll rescue your we'll, we'll rescue your little company. What Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford, bah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you you'll be all right. Just, just, just stick with it. We'll we'll, we'll weather this through. And what's crazy is it? I, I remember watching like half of that movie. Like I liked it. I really liked it. I'm like, oh my god, this isn't half bad. This, this is actually I'm enjoying watching this. And then I just stopped watching it. <laughs> it's like okay, I gotta get back to this sometime. It's like one of those. It's like it's like one of those museum movies where like you just go and you're like, oh wow, I really appreciate this. You know, it's sort of like if you didn't know anything about Kubrick and you just watched Barry Lyndon, you're like, okay, I could see it. I could see it, right? And then. If you find out a little bit more about Kubrick and cinematography and all this, you're like, oh, okay, this is a, this is a, this is actually a fun movie. I can actually appreciate this on a technical level. But then, you know, that's sort of me with um, minus the second step for Heaven's Gate, which I still have to finish watching. To, to anyone listening to this, Sean's going to be more of the movie guy than I am. His his, uh, his his grasp of films and filmographies is vastly superior compared to my own. That's why I'm just gonna. That's why I'm just gonna sit down. I, this is just like, like extended after hours film school for me. Whenever I talk to my friend Sean here, because it's just gonna be like, yes, sir, yes, yes, just, 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 please keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it's gonna be. So I'll try not to interrupt too much <laughs> with a name comment at least. Just gonna put it all on me. Yeah, you, the Sean hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the, the the joke is going to be always like you know welcome to oh I had a name for this I was like. Uh, I was going to say, this is what we call the Shuan song. Shuan, oh, uh, oh, Lord. Oh, man, it's, that hurts. Yeah, That's terrible. It's, like it's uh, you know, uh, a Ooh. podcast about, about Two literature. Two assholes. And, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a podcast about literature and philosophy yeah. uh, and film theory. And yeah. uh, I'm here for the dick and fart jokes. <laughs> No, see, like whenever whenever I talk to you, right, it's because you know, well, I like you first of all, right? But secondly, it's like, okay, well, how how can I not interrupt him and make a fool of myself at the same time? I have to make sure that at least I give something that he'll, you know, you'll find a little bit funny, a little bit engaging, a little bit like witty enough that you'll be like, okay, you know what? He's pretty cool. I can still hang out with him. He's not, he's <laughs> he's he's not that bad. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm talking. I'm talking about. I was talking about you. Refer- you, you thinking about me that way, not the other way around. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yep, that's that. Oh man, <laughs> cocaine bear, huh? Cocaine bear, right? <laughs> I, I, a, I, I hear. Speaking along those lines of like odd, uh, you know, like plots for things. Years ago, I had come up with something that was called. Oh, uh, what is it? I think it was called undercarriage. What? What is this? Undercarriage. I was okay. Th- I was okay. First of all, I was thinking you're going to say koala bear holocaust, but that's obviously not where we're going. Oh man, that, that would have been that would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Except, unfortunately, there kind of was a koala bear holocaust last year with the Australian fires. Oh, so oh my God. We're, we're uh, th- I I have to leave that one go. Sean, I'm sorry, you you broke up there. Did you say koala bear holocaust with Australian fires last year? Is that what you said? I said there was a <laughs> koala bear holocaust because of the fires in Australia last year. So that Callous. project is no longer going to even exist. Well, this is like the day the koalas cried. Well, thank you, Sean. Mm. 
But uh, anyway. undercarriage. This was my uh, my mashup of taking Witness and Christine. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> okay. And it's all about a young man who uh, who decides to to go back to his uh, uh, to, to go back to his ordinal after uh, you know during Rumspringer. Uh, and his car follows him, <laughs> and the car is, you know, possessed. So even though I know that the the, the Amish they ride buggies, not carriages, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I mean, like, the, 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 there's a lot of carnage of this car like eating people. Mm. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to summon. I'm trying to summon the literary philosophical aspect of this. Uh, it's forthcoming. Under, under carriage, under carriage. Oh, very good night sky there, English. It's, it's as best as I can do. I am not going to venture into that territory. I'm not witty enough for that kind of nonsense. Oh my goodness, under carriage. Did you ever go? Did you ever get around to writing that? Like writing, yeah. writing. Did you ever get around to writing under carriage? I did. Uh, I I did outline it. Uh, I don't know why I I didn't go forward with it because I actually thought it would have been a very good B movie. Mm. Uh, I mean, like it would have been quite a gore fest. I mean, there was <laughs> there was a there was a scene where the car like. Follows a, a a guy down a uh, an alley, just like in Christine. Mm-hmm. And when the car goes to ram him into the wall, the guy jumps up and grabs uh, like a lamp <laughs> above the door. Yeah. And then what happens is the car pops its hood. Oh. And the and the lamp breaks, and the guy falls into where the engine block is. <laughs> And then the and then the hood just closes, closes like a mouth. And then yeah, and then you just see like gore coming out of the <laughs> exhaust pipe. All right, you know you know what that reminds me of. Nothing but trouble. The oh, mang remember yes. the mangler, was yeah, it the mangler? The mangler. The mangler? God, you know what? There's a gem. I remember watching that movie when I was probably like well like ten years old, eleven years old, and that that was like. Like I, I remember it was on HBO or something. We got like free cable at the time. And I don't know what, what it was about this movie that I was not shocked or appalled by it, even at the time. I guess found it funny. You know, it's like, this is like, like, like what? <laughs> well, it is funny. It just yeah. has some really odd things in it. Like that Hell yeah. Dan Aykroyd has a penis on his nose. Was, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> and he's like 140 years old. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, jeez. Uh, I should weird crap like that. I should I should start I should start incorporating. It smells like Sao Paulo in my daily conversations. Like if something that smells weird. It smells like Sao Paulo. Remember that? <laughs> Remember that? Like it was it was there's that, that line with uh, Taylor Negron when they were going into like the swamp or whatever. And he goes yeah. he goes <laughs> it smells like Sao Paulo. And then later on, Chevy Chase like as a quick aside with Demi Moore, he was like it smells like Sao Paulo. It's the same. It was like the same. It was like the different kind of like, like delivery that was just like okay, I can appreciate yeah. this. Oh <laughs> man! But that but that was it. That was a good it's, movie. It's a weird. It's a weird movie. It's got the the diaper babies out in the junkyard. <laughs> Bobo and little doubles. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's right. That's right. <laughs> The diaper babies. Yep. 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 I wonder I wonder how many people are gonna make it this far into this show. Because I think after this after that point it's gonna be like, fuck these guys. <laughs> They're not gonna listen it's to like this. Like, we're going into our second hour talking about nothing but trouble. <laughs> nothing but <laughs> it's appropriate. Um but you know what though? I mean I kinda wanna double back <laughs> to Richard Donner for a second. Yeah. No, let's do that. Because funny, yeah. yeah, it's funny. Because you know, I always wondered about the relationship he had with, with Steven Spielberg, especially with the Goonies, right? It, there was like a, I think there was like a period of time where they felt like it's like uh, there, there, actually I don't know if, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there was like this home movie uh, of Spielberg's like I don't know if it was like 
their uh, baby shower with with him and, and Amy Irving at the time. And it's like a star-studded event, but it was like it's very intimate. It was like kind of like a, a, a like you know Richard Donner's house or something, right? And okay. the impression I got was like, like, like were these guys like ever like tight? Like I, I get the impression that you know Spielberg and John Milius and were were tight. Like they would just they would just you know go out and go like duck hunting together or something, right? They do like man stuff. But with Donner, <laughs> no. Have you heard these stories though? Like these anecdotes where it's like, oh yeah, Joe, like Lucas Coppola, Milius, and Spielberg were out into the woods and they're duck hunting. Yeah, um, yeah. It was usually Milius uh, bringing too many guns, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. and and Lucas like uh, you know making believe him going just going poo with his mouth. <laughs> okay, well, I'm surprised. And then and then Tarantino got in the act. Because apparently they invited him out for like one of the like, like you know back in the '90s when when Tarantino started getting you know momentum, and he like he he did you hear this like he had this thing where where it was called like the Hollywood Mafia, where it's like oh yeah it's 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 it's, it's, it's you know Milius and which he's a huge fan of evidently, um, Spielberg and all these guys going out to go like you know quell shooting or something, <laughs> it's like that's that's a scene, right? Like yeah. let's invite, let's invite Tarantino out to this thing. <laughs> why not sure and why stop there well yeah it'd be even better you uh you invite tarantino and scorsese and then yes. nobody gets to talk no because everybody's talking it's just a, it's just a one-sided conversation even though they're thinking they're talking to other people yeah, yeah. this is like you know spielberg and Milius being like jesus lord what are we doing with these guys like this is the next generation. This is what we worked so hard for in the eighties and the seventies. This, this it was leading to this, really. And, <laughs> but yeah, I, like I do wonder about that though. Like I, like I love hearing little tidbits. Like when directors hang out with each other. Like what do they do? What are they, like you get you get enough of like Lucas and Spielberg. All right, fine. Right, they're like two little kids. Like you know, playing with toys. I guess sometimes. Right. But then it's like when I found out about Spielberg and Milius, I'm like, huh, really? Like there were like there were like close buds like me, me, kind of like man friends, you know, and when I saw like this you know home movie of you know this of this baby shower and you see like Millie uh, you see not Millius you see Richard Donner there, I was like oh, shit like they're like hey Steve like come over here let me show you something and I'm like wow do they like really just like hang out like what like I remember I think reading an anecdote about like. Like him and Richard Donner going out to play golf or something. I'm like Spielberg plays golf. I had no idea. Like they both play golf. I, I, I mean, you never you you wouldn't know it. Like you know, we try to make movies ourselves, and it's like a pain in the ass, right? And these guys are like, oh yeah, let's go play some golf, shoot some quail, have some have like let's like live our lives a little bit. We don't have to make these damn movies <laughs> all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, it's um, you know. Uh... It it sound it sounded like they must have been doing something right, right? You know, you you, you, you making life work on all different levels, right? Right. <laughs> like here we are struggling to like you know at least trying to like fulfill some of our artistic you know endeavors happening. They're like you know shooting quail. Like how many quail have to die? How many ducks yeah. must die? How long? How long can I go without actually having to work? Yes, yes, yes. Do I do I re- do we really need to make you know direct a movie today? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Let's see, how, how long can we go? Uh, does, does anyone want to go out to lunch? Yeah, really. We'll go out the and then after that we'll get something to eat. Which you know goes back to <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's I like, I remember like like hearing about like how Groucho Marx and like I guess that they would go to like him and the other comedians of his time would go to like the Los Angeles you know country club or whatever, and whenever like, they'd sit around a table or something, and then when one of them would make a good joke, they wouldn't laugh. Did you hear about this? They wouldn't laugh. They would just tap the table. They would go like this, like with their finger. I don't know if you heard that. It was just like a tap on no. the table. Yeah, they wouldn't laugh if somebody like you know would just give a really good retort to something. They would just, they would not laugh. They'd be like, that was good. That was good. And that was like a show of respect, evidently. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know where I heard that. I think it was like, maybe I was watching like Groucho Marx, like, you know, life videos on, on YouTube or something one night, a few, like a year ago. And I guess stuck in my head. It's like, they wouldn't, they would never like say that was great. That was like, that was more like, okay, that was good. 
That was pretty good. They were just, they were just. Can you imagine like sitting at this table, not knowing what the hell was going on, and they're just insulting each other left and right, and then all you hear in between is this. You're like, what the hell are they? What the hell are these people doing? Like serving, like if you're like serving their like, you know, their 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 their, their macaroons for for dessert, and they're just like. Dut, 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 dut. Yeah, very good, good form. Very good. Yes, exactly. Very good form. And speaking of which, I've been getting for some reason I've been getting. Um, uh, clips of the duelists on um, my YouTube. I've never seen that, and I've always wanted to. And especially, I, didn't, I had no idea Harvey Cartel was in the duelists. But now that I see some, like I saw some, like him, him and David Carrot. Was it David, Keith Carradine or David Carradine in the duelists? It's uh, Keith. Keith Carradine. Pretty, pretty good. It's like it's like it's like Ridley Scott watched Barry, uh, Barry Lyndon. And he's like, ah, oh, enough with that shit. Let me just let me just put the let me just put the swords fights. That's 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 <laughs> that's, the, that's the impression I got. No, I, like, I have no idea what the deal is about aside from like, you know, sword fighting based on what YouTube clips I've seen, and it's pretty good too. It's like it's like um, it reminded me of uh, the form in in um, in uh, Yojimbo uh, and uh, Sanjuro. Speaking yeah. of the, la- the last the last uh, the last uh, 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 fight in Sanjuro, which was really good, very bloody. Yeah, is that is that where he? The geyser. Slice the guy and he like, you know, yep. uh, the condom squibbed out and like, like Yeah, it was a it was like a torrent. It wasn't a condom, Sean. It was it was more like a it was more like a geyser. It was more like like a lot of cum. That's it. It wasn't it wasn't a geyser. <laughs> I, I thought that they used to use those. They used like prophylactic uh, uh Yeah, I remember and like I remember that. hearing the same thing. And I I hmm. But you know you know it's really kind of What's frustrating to me when you learn about, you know, making movies and so forth, how like crazily practical a lot of this stuff really is. And then <laughs> and then what sucks is that when you get to be around people who know this stuff and then some, you know, they have their own language. It's like any other craft, right? They have their own language. They have their own um, uh, 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 codes and then and their own street smartness, as it were. And then you're just like a babe in the woods. You're like, what are you what are you guys talking about? And it, it, it sort of sneaks into the text. Like, I, I, you know, I took this cinematography course uh, over the winter time, right? And just, I, and I, had, I bought uh, cinematography, this book by uh, David, I was going to say David Blaine. Uh, David, <laughs> <laughs> but I, Blaine, Brown, I don't know. I have to I have, I have it upstairs. Anyway, and, you know, the terminology sneaks in. And you're like, shit, it, 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 it's so like, I know like every, like I said, every trade, every craft has its own language, has its own idiosyncrasies that you have to sort of pick up on if you want to be like, you know, even mildly respected in it. But you read this stuff and, you know, like the, you know, the prophylactic tricks, right? That you just talked about. And you're like, shit, man. It's a, is it like that you just have to be insanely inventive all the time and have the effects be on point as it were? That the final product, when people take a look at it, they just become in awe. Hopefully, that they want to engage with you, and you're like, okay, how did they, how did you do this? How did you do that? And you start telling them, and you're like, okay, I did this with this, and I did this with that. And then you just they, they give you a look where you hope they would give you a look where you'd be like, okay, you're one of us now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that is something that I don't even know if I'll achieve in my lifetime. I have no idea. It's just it's just you yeah. have to be in, you have to be in the same crew. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I oftentimes used to kind of think like, you know, uh, I don't know, try, trying to think of how you can do tricks mm. and get away with certain things, and I'm like, maybe I just don't have that mind. Right. <laughs> when it comes to that, uh, you know, it's like you're, you, you might be a problem solver, but it doesn't mean the... The solution you come up with is the one you uh, mm-hmm. is the best way of doing it. Uh, <laughs> ah, what was the? Uh, I had a a story that went along with that. Oh please. Oh, I I do remember back at SVA, uh, we had this we had somebody who came to do like a uh, to do like a talk about something, mm. and one of the instructors was like, "Don't be asking." Uh, how you should ask why hmm. and this que- the, this person in the class said 
what if I don't care why they did it, but I kind of want to know how they did mm, it. Mm. And that's what's important to me. Mm. And like the response back from the instructors like, well, then I, I don't think that you're, you know, you're, you're thinking correctly about this. Lord Jesus. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I do believe that they did go ahead and go, how'd you do this? <laughs> how'd you do it? <laughs> Oh man, yeah. 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 Which became like a topic of uh, uh, of conversation at the next class. Like, you know, uh, why why is it so important for you to know how? And it was like, well, because there's something that I wanted to do, mm. and I see it in my head, and it's a feeling that I have. Mm -hmm. It's my why. Right. And I need to know in. how right. I can help translate that. I was like, me asking them why doesn't help me. Right, right, right. It's just a, it's like learning how the technique, and then if you like grasp it, then maybe you can get the why. You can derive the why inside, right? It's yeah. like okay, yeah, yeah. See, that shouldn't be that. That's 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 sort of like where the bridge sort of collapses, right? Where in 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 wanting to be you know, blunt and honest about certain things, especially in an academic setting, it's, it just becomes so, it, it sort of is looked down upon, right? It's like, you're not supposed to be that crass as it were. You're supposed to have some sort of like higher intent, right? Or respect when someone comes in, this, let's just say this great sage comes in or this great magician comes in as it were. And they're like, he's like, we'll, we'll present, we'll do a master class, and we'll just, you know, graciously, uh, 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 present, uh, uh, motions that as a student you should absorb with every fiber of your being during this during this during this presentation, and then from then on, somehow derive kind of derive a, a I don't know a, a motion or an interpretation of. Whereas you're just kind of like fuck it, I just want to know what the hell the guy did. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, you know, you know I'd... I'd... It, it, it's kind of it kind of it, what, what's sad I, I it's I think it's been like this for I guess academia right for like who knows how long right where it's like you're not supposed to be that quote unquote base right which kind of sucks because you, at the very end it's like you, you, that's what kind of counts that's what sort of is like the gateway I think to learning on one level or another the, the maybe the base is purest level I don't know yeah mm. yeah no it's uh, it is true. <laughs> Well, that's just frustrating, though, because, I mean, you would, you want to try to be respectful, but not sound like an asshole at the same time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I, especially in SVA, it was like, you know, uh, trying to put our best foot forward, right? And not realizing that by doing that, you don't even realize you, you have one shoe tied to another many times. And then you tr and, you, and you fall flat on your face, but you still try, right? I mean, that's what that's what school is. Yeah, well, I mean, it's. Huh. I, uh, uh, I see. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was. It was a. Uh, uh, I think I was in a production class. I might have been. I might have been freshman year. And I don't know. It's interesting because it's always like the people you see your freshman year are not going to be the people that not, not everybody you see is going to be the people that are there the last day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and often wonder, well, am I one of those? Yes, 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 yes. What the hell just happened to the lights? Yeah, my, my, my lights are flickering too, actually. Is it because of storms? Is it because of... Um... The hurricane, or what's left of the hurricane? Did, did it make it? So, I know. I thought it was supposed to be like early morning. Uh, uh, now it? we're back to weather. Uh, we're, this is weather talk. This is weather talk. Schwann's yeah. weather talk. <laughs> but no, you were, you know you were saying you no know, you you were bringing up a good like a, a good observation there, where it was you know in your first day there is it the people are there are they going to be there on your last day? I mean. The class, at least, or at least the whole run. Yeah, you know, it, um, one of the things that uh, uh, 
I think I kind of, I don't regret maybe focusing my energies toward, you know, writing. Uh, mm. And I, you'll hear a lot of this in the, in the, the, you know, this little side thing I got going on. Sure. Um, which uh, I, I joked with Ann. I'm like, I could see, uh, you know, if Juan ever like watches this thing, he's going to be like, oh my God, I know what he's talking about or I know who he's talking about. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> Most likely, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You know, like the thing was, though, I had always kind of, I was always, always uh, planning on pursuing probably the screenwriting part. Because I wanted to see, I kind of wanted to, to test it out and see what I could do to maybe figure out how to become a professional. Sure. Uh, I still where, think you can do it, by the way. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I before, mean. Before I lose this thought. Let yes, me just please. Out. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and the thing that worried me about doing the production side was that I might have gotten myself stuck in a technical area where I felt like I stifled myself. Mm. I mean, I'm, I was 23 at the time. I didn't really know. I knew that I wanted to do something and I wanted to give this a try. Sure. Uh, and so from my final, from my, my final project freshman year, I wanted to actually do something a little screwy. Mm. And I do remember that the instructor was just like, <laughs> I think this is a really big mistake. You should be focusing on doing this. Blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 blah, 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 blah. Mm. And I was like, I, I didn't really have the like heart to tell him. I, I, I don't give a fuck. Man. I, just <laughs> want... I don't fucking care. I was like, I wanted to just do something really abstract. I'm like, I'm going to be doing screenwriting next year. Like, <laughs> Get off my back, bro. Come on, bro. Get off my back. And because of all the like, kind of the little hassling that I got in this one-on-one -on -one meeting. Mm -hmm. I just decided I just did something like really safe. Mm. And I look at what I did and I'm like, wow, how uninspired and like not trying to do something at all. Yeah. yeah. And I almost think that if I had tried to do something a little f more fun, a little wacky, yeah. it would have been a little more like freeing. Yeah. Uh, because it was going to be something a little more abstract. It was going to be a little more dreamlike. I had no idea whether or not I was actually going to be able to make it, but I figured I would give it a try. Hmm. Huh. Uh, and, hmm. uh, yeah, no, I just always kind of think about that. And uh, it's funny because when I was, when, during junior year, when I did the production on, on, uh, Burnt Up. Sure. I, again, was actually aiming to try and do something that was going to be more of a slasher movie. <laughs> oh, God. And ended up, like, you know, filming stuff that just does not cut together as a slasher movie. It's, <laughs> you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, I, uh, uh, the Spanish guy, he edited it into this, <laughs> like, tone poem. What an asshole. Yeah, I know. <laughs> tone poem oh jesus but hey i mean it was a I good tone there was a poem. point there but you know it's yeah well i mean from my end um i i i felt um when, when i uh, maybe to, i should probably just do a offer like a, a a sort of a brief explanation here so at sva i don't think they still do this at sva but back when we went to sva uh from 2002 to 2006 um First, uh, for film especially, uh, first year was generalized, and then at the end of your first year, if you're doing the full bachelor's, uh, second to fourth year, you have to pick a major, you have to pick a specialization. Some people pick mm -hmm. two, uh, more than one at least, and maybe I should have done that, should have totally burnt myself out, but instead I decided to focus on screenwriting, because I figured, okay, at the time, I thought, okay, you know what, I, have a, I don't have a grasp on what, <laughs> maybe I still don't, I don't know. I don't have a grasp on 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 what it is that what words you have to use and what structure you have to use to communicate a full story in cinematic in, in, in terms of a cinema in terms of a cinematic language I guess and 
that's sort of the approach I had when I decided to choose that. Maybe I was a little bit intimidated by the directing course, but at the same time, I just felt like I was going to be another another like head in the majority there because like our screenplay class was like what at most twenty people, as opposed to the directing majors. There were up in the hundreds, like hundreds of like hundreds of students were doing directing. Uh, uh, at least that's the impression I got at the beginning of second year. I don't know if they ever like lasted that long. Uh, until the fourth, but <clears throat> excuse me. So I thought, okay, maybe what I can do was, okay, if I do like sort of a deep dive into this stuff, then somehow something will click. <laughs> and then, and then that will sort of give me sort of at least a, uh, um, uh, I don't want to, I hesitate to use the word literary, uh, advantage, but something that's structurally advantage. And then that, that was, for me, that was so, it's not that it was hard. It just became very, very dense because I think one thing that, that contributes to, to having an effective, to communicating an effective vision of something, especially in a visual format, especially like something like film, you have to be crystal clear on what you want, like throughout. You have to be like, like Dave, whenever, whenever you hear David Lynch talk about what he wants when he directs. It's so lucid and clear, most times anyway, that <laughs> right no, I'm, well, but but seriously though, it's like you oh, get yeah, the impression yeah. you get the impression it's like this guy has it. It's like it's like it's like it's like it's, it's this very lucid, tactile thing that he just communicates to people, and you know his crew, his actors, and so forth. That's inspiring to watch to somebody like me, where it's like, okay, what do you, how do you, you know, you stumble over your words, you try to find out how it is that, what it is that you want to say and so forth. But it's virtually, when you parse it back, it's actually way simpler than all of that. It's just making sure that you have this idea in your mind. And if you, you know, like Link says, you fall in love with it, then you start to communicate it regardless of what people think of it. Now it's easier, I think, in the in maybe in the film industry once you have the funding and you have the crew and you have your trusted people around you, where they're, I mean, basically just saying yes, yes to you all the time. Like, okay, what do you want, Mr. Lynch? What do you want? Like a monkey and a guy with one arm? You got it. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's like the behind the scenes of of, of Inland Empire, right? Uh, and and it's like he'll ask for these absurd things, and you're like, what? And then sure enough, but it, of course, if you know that world, then this stuff is like these are ingredients. These are elements that you know are put into place, and uh, not to not to not to um, uh, you know uh, give you a big ego, Sean. But it's like the the reason I said earlier is like you can still you know do your 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 screenwriting career or whatever is just that when I was going to school with Sean, he said he's heard he's heard this he's heard me say this many times, but Sean was like or still is I should say. Uh, I just haven't had the pleasure of, you know, reading his work in a while. Um, crystal clear in his, in his, in his work. And, uh, I think I echo, remember when you were, uh, had that acting class with Jua Lee and yeah. Jua Lee and you communicated this because I wasn't there obviously. So you communicated this event to me where it's like Jua, Jua Lee described you as being a very, was it a master technician of your craft? Something like that. That always stuck with me. So uh, yeah, I think she might have been referring to the fact that I did a lot of eye acting. Eye acting. <laughs> eye okay. Acting. Well, yeah. that's why yeah. well, when I think of the technician of your craft comment, I always think of that as a uh, screenwriting because it's like that's when 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 Sean would would bring a screenplay, very precise. He knows exactly why. He was always very calm. Like whenever he talks, as you know, like the people listening to this, when he talks, um, aside from you know the bullshit, he's no bullshit. And he knows exactly what he wants. He comes in. He, you know what? Can I ask you a question about that? Now that now that we're we're here, um, how often do you struggle at all with knowing what it is that you want from from like, the little bits in the movie or little scenes or, or, or the little ingredients or character? How much of that is sort of like flows? That you just sort of just comes out, and how much of that is that? Okay, I I know I wanted to be just like this, and I have to struggle to get there. And let me just tinker with this or that, and maybe it's an interior process kind of stuff. I I, I haven't really thought about this in regards to you in a while, so I always wanted to ask. 
Uh, well, I, some of it was easy and some of it is, you know, more of a difficult discovery. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, really, I mean, I, I will put some discipline in the, uh, the craft of, of knowing how to uh, map out your story and your scenes. Sure. As much as it could be like, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. Um, you're going to hook somebody toward the beginning. You're going to give them the reason to stay. You're going to give them some twists and turns and, you mm. know, show them, make them want to care right. about, uh, uh, you know, what's going to happen next. Uh, I mean, I said this in, in class one time, which almost uh, caused a fight, which is, <laughs> I don't I, care. I don't, I don't care. Right, right. And right. it wasn't meant to be an insult. Insult, no. Um, you know, and, uh, but uh, the way that I wrote, and this sounds really pretentious, was that I used to come up with the, I, I, I never did, I never did cards, which is right. funny because now I do. Uh, but I hmm. never used to map out my scenes with cards and put them on a wall and try and figure things out. Uh I used to come up with uh, scenes, mostly, just scenes, I ideas of what the scenes are supposed to be about. And then I would come up with some kind of structure. Sometimes I would figure out that I was missing stuff. but hmm. And then what I would do is each scene I used to play to myself to try and figure out how certain emotions or motivations would come out right uh and uh i mean i used to just do this stuff all the time right right uh, right. which is one of the reasons why i used to write very fast yes and yes not everything was great uh but the best compliment i got was the fact that at least i was always working yeah and you you'd have you'd have uh it, it, your stuff always felt more put together uh there, there was this intrinsic connections that were happening, um, and on, and on the other side of it though, because I was, I was that Spanish jerk that that worked on Burnt Up that he re, that he uh. that he that he referenced earlier. On the other side of it, because uh, Burnt Up was this short that he had shot that he, that he invited me on to, um, junior year, right? And he just stayed. <laughs> it, over, it overstayed its welcome. <laughs> and I was and 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 because I, I had editing software and I'm like fuck this I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this why not right and I was like Sean can I do this that and the other with it and he's like sure just go on ahead you waste your life with that movie and I started working on it and no lie I would I, part of it one reason did I tell you this so one reason why it took so damn long was because I, I I just took notes on every scene that was like my student part of me coming out where like, okay, I want to take notes on every scene and see how these things sort of gel together. And that was a shocking experience because you find all these different connections that, that, that totally slip by you. And if you permit me, I like to illustrate, there was this one shot. I don't know if we're not like jerking each other off here, but seriously though, this is like, this is, this, <laughs> this is like, this is like, you know, when you down in the nitty gritty of like, you know, making movies this is what happens, right? When, you know, you're trying to put this stuff together. There's this one shot. The whole scene is that this girl is having nightmares and this is impacting her waking life, right? On the very sort of superficial interpretation of the scene, right? And the the nightmare, well, it, it kind of felt like that nightmare. It was a scene that came literally later in the movie in regards to like, maybe it was like a, like a, an, an, like a, like a hand or an arm being chopped off because the history of the house that this person, <laughs> no, really. Right. Okay. Well, okay. I'm, he's like having a it's ball a here. It's a bad effect. I'm so, sorry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it was a, like, it's, it's, it's in the movie. Uh, it's what counts. So I saw this thing and I'm like, what, how does it, how the hell does this fit in into this? And no lie. The day after the morning after shot, as it were, right. Of she's sitting at the table and the way the way it's the, the, the composition is set up is that you it's sort of like a medium shot, and you see her at the table looking kind of exo, you know kind of like catatonic, and in front of her is like you know this box of lucky charms, but the way it's I don't know if you ever if you did this intentionally I thought this was great that it didn't it, the the way the box of lucky charms is set up isn't exactly um, you don't see the full text of the box 
the way I saw it was instead of Lucky Charms, you'll see late icky arms because it's supposed to be chocolate Lucky Charms. So I'm like, oh, shit, wouldn't it be fun if we put this right after the arm dream? And then you'd have that extra dimension if you're looking for it of what she might be thinking about. Not that you need it, probably, but that presence is there. It's like subtext. So that's the kind of stuff. Did you know that? That's the kind of stuff that I was just digging, that I was just digging. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm taking these notes. And then all of a sudden something would click. And I'm like, oh, this would be fun if we put it that way. So, hey, you know what? On the other side of it, it's like, there, I, I, and I don't know if this is because of your process too. It's like once you get into the nitty gritty of stuff and you act it out and you try to, you know, do do your 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 technique and your engineering of how the scenes should go, and then taking it step by step, you know, through casting, through through the actors and through the direction and then through shooting it, how much everything kind of comes together, not even in a linear way, right? Because you'll be like, I mean, I, were you honestly now? Were you thinking about the, the, you know, the arm reference when you were shooting that box of Lucky Charms? I mean, no, no, no not at all. I don't think so either. So when I saw that, when I saw the word just right there, I'm like, holy shit, this is perfect. You know, this was sort of like the movie That's got like smiling. That's like Stanley Kubrick shit. I, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. on that level. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it was one of those things where it's like, wow, this is actually kind of precious. I have to, I, I, it would be, it, it would be cri- like, it would be criminal of me to sort of neglect that. Because if anybody ever finds out about this, you know, tone poem that we did, then they're going to be like, wait, why did they do it like this? Oh, wait, they could have had this, you know, they could have had the golden opportunity to put the, this shot, the arm shot after this shot. Man, they're idiots, assholes. You know, then, <laughs> then, then, then what, then, you know, what, are, what, are, what are we doing with our lives? You know, it's like, well, like why, are we, why do we even practice what we preach? We don't even do that. We just, we're like, okay, we'll just throw this shit together and like, you know, forget about it. But yeah, <laughs> the, 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 but that was, but that was part of the fun of like, of, of, putting that together and, you know, experiencing the, the fucking craft that happened, you know, that was like, Sean, this is fantastic. You're like, you're genius, dude. I can't believe (laughs) there it is. That G word, right. We're like, we're just like, you know, finding stuff out and you don't even know this stuff's there. I couldn't tell for me sort of burnt up was kind of like, uh, 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 you know what? I won't say it just in case, you know, people do get a little bit intrigued and not put off by us. <laughs> they want to see it eventually. If you want to see Burnt Up, <laughs> go to nolanfilm at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> and you reach out you reach out to Mr. Sean Nolan and then he'll 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 hook you up with a copy hopefully. I don't know. Do you still have any of those DVDs left? <laughs> I'm not sure where they are. <laughs> oh my god. I, mean, I, did, I, I is isn't it still on You know what? It used to be on my YouTube page. I think it's still on yours. It's still on mine. Yeah. 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 But you know what's you know what sucks though? I I I know the movie's too dark. I get it. I get it. But you know at the same time, I remember really watching that movie on different screens after I was color timing it or like you know doing the saturation, I guess. And 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 I, I swear to you, it looked it, when you pop in the DVD and you watch it, you know, on the DVD, it looks, I guess, as bright and and as clear as it should, you know, given yeah. what it looks like. And then on YouTube, it just looks like murky and dark, which I, that's why I was like, this is like one of those movies you have to watch in the dark and you have to experience it. But I, I don't even know if people do that anymore. I guess they still do, right? But I don't even know if this would be worth it. <laughs> Sadly, I mean, I don't. I mean, I still I, I love that movie to, to, to bits and pieces, but it's like still it's like one of those things where you like you see you want it to go out into the world and do its wonders. And you're like, oh, oh, man, I, I remember I submitted it to the Coney Island Film Festival. Oh, Lord. And this guy, oh, I got shit. contacted and said that it got refused because it's too long. And meanwhile, it fit within the parameters of time. Hmm. So. I guess, you know, that sucks. I was always kind of hoping to see it in a, in a public forum. We could still um, do it. I mean, we can rent out. I mean, really, we can rent out a name, like a, like a name C or something, and just uh, yeah. Nobody nobody goes to the movies anymore, so we could probably rent. Uh, yeah, it would be fitting, right? For a movie nobody watches, we'll rent a movie theater that nobody will come to see. It's uh, yeah. it's 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 sort of perfect. We could also we can make it a double feature. Uh, and then you know, they can stay and watch Norbit. <laughs> no, please don't. Don't do that. Oh, well, like, at, least, at least Eddie Murphy's going to be headlining us. That's pretty good. 
like come for the uh, come for burnt up Steve Freddie Murphy and then and then like in and fine print in Norbit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even trading places. It's not even good Eddie Murphy. It's arguable. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even good Eddie Murphy. It's like it's like nineties Eddie Murphy. Oh man. Aw. Mm. <laughs> but 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 still though, I mean um Shit, you know what though? I mean, to, to vent a few frustrations about a, about burnt up though, it's but this is but still this is like a life lesson, right? Where you can put in like a like almost a thousand percent on something, like really commit to it, and and want the best for it. And I was always hoping, like, okay, look, I, I'm hoping I'm always doing the right moves with this because I this is not my movie. This is Sean's film. And I wanted to just, you know what, there's something there and he was giving me an opportunity to just bring it out. And dude, he gave me the opportunity and I would just, there would be the weeks and weeks where I just think about this movie and you know what? It's like a child. You just kind of want the best for this thing. You just want like, okay, well, like how do I, how do I, with the, what I have, how with the resources that I have, right. Or the skill or talent or whatever that I may or may not have, how do I, how do I provide the best, the best for, for this in, in a weird way, living thing, right? It's not like, you know, I wanted to put it in like a thing where with the stars and so forth and, 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 you know, have it like dawdle for like your whole, you know, minute or two minutes or whatever it was. I guess because it, I guess felt like this was part of the experience that I guess lent itself to like another dimension to what this thing was. And it's like you see like these ingredients that drop into place. And then when you finally feel like, okay, this is what it's going to be. What is it? You know, and this is when you came in like, Sean, what do you think of this? And you're like, okay, you know what? I don't, what did you say to me? You're like, you even created a whole Facebook group on it. You were like, like, what was it? It was called, uh, uh, I don't understand burnt up, but there's something to it. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, uh, I'll take that. I'll take that. Sure. Why not? I've been taking it for the rest of my life anyway. Sure. We can just do, you can just stick with that. That's fine. That's like, uh, I don't understand it. So it must be art. (laughs) It's very, it's very, it's very artsy. Very artsy. Hmm. But still, though, it was it was fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it, it was fun. And it was like kind of like, OK, you know, that that kind of like was like a meta moment when 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 I was editing that because I put so much time into it that I did feel truly feel burnt up by the time I got to the end of it. I'm like, Sean, I can't do this anymore. No, I'm serious. I wasn't even I'm not trying to even like jerk your chain or anything. It's like by the time I got to the done with it, like, I don't know what to do anymore. I have to like do something else now because it's just, you know. I mean, it's like, do you really know when it's like, well, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have children. I'm on my way there. Right. Um, when you want something to work so badly that it's like, oh, I hope people get it, you know, and the tragedy that happens when it's like, not quite there, not so fast. It doesn't work that way. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 But Anywho, life moves on, right? Uh, always love hearing about what you got next, and not that that's a prompt for you to talk about what you're going to do next, of course. But oh, sure, but, okay. So let's talk about this next thing. Want <laughs> <laughs> want, but um, really though, I mean, I I think let me, let me let me tell you something. I think um, I think um. Really, you should go back into this thing. You should go back. I mean, if this is what your if this is where your passion is, if this is what you really want to do, you should fucking do it now. Well, I mean, and I just, do. I do have something that I'm. I, you know, I mean, like I don't. I, I. There's there's levels to this. I mean, for one sure. thing, it would be nice to find some way to try and, you know, monetize your talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I, I get into a little bit of this with. Uh, uh, with this, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, I guess we'll just call it non a non-narrative project, hmm. um, which is what, and that's my new expertise. Every movie I make now is just going to be some non-narrative project. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. You know. Yeah, I do, uh, I do. Like, I think uh, I do. Like, every, everything is almost kind of like F is for fake. <laughs> uh, it's going to feature me 
with a beard and bloated. Uh, <laughs> bloated. Just like Orson Welles, enough is for fake. Uh, doing, right. you know, crappy magic. And uh, <laughs> actually, his sleight, his sleight of hand is pretty good in that movie. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's going to be some documentary to it. Uh, there's going to be some truth, uh, a lot of lying, and uh, you're not going to be no, you're not going to know what is what. Uh, so blurring the line between what is going to be real and what's fake. Uh, yeah, and you want to know the, what the you want to know what the name of this non-narrative project is called? I love this. Here we go. Here, the, here it goes. The Hemo Goblins. Yes. Yes. Sean shared with this with this me before, yeah. The yeah. Hemo Goblins. Yeah, and then I got my uh, my my story that's all written out in cards on my poster board here. Uh, I got a cork board on my wall. Uh, Beautiful and cork. That is, I I have many really bad titles for it, <laughs> so we'll just call it. Uh, what the hell was the last one I had? Uh, Babe got her gun. <laughs> yeah, Babe McTeague. Babe McTeague. Babe yep. McTeague. Did I ever tell you about the pit of kittens? <laughs> Can we just use that? I'm as finally the, you know, going the, to get the, the, pit, the pit of kittens. <laughs> it's uh, it's making its way into a script. Please say pit of kittens again. Pit of, pit of kittens. Pit of kittens. <laughs> that's uh, that's um, that, that's that's like you know, Brad Pitt's title, in 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 in, Lord, in Game of Thrones, Pit of Kittens. <laughs> no, wow, that's a, that, that's got no response. Never mind. Let's just move on then. Um, all right. So, do you want to go into this or what? <laughs> what the pit of kittens? <laughs> Yes, the pit of kittens. Um. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just tell you this, <laughs> this one part. Okay? okay. Yes. Yes. So, Babe McTeague gets into a hand-to-hand fight with a guy. Uh, gets the upper hand on him. I think this is the fight where she suffocates the guy with her breasts. Uh, <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, I think I think it is. I. And then, uh, <laughs> while he's disoriented, he falls into, like, a, uh, what's the best way to describe it? I don't want to say, make it sound like it's a Joker thing, like a vat of chemicals, but he falls into, <laughs> like, a pit of we'll kittens. Call it just a vat of kittens. And, um, he disappears into the vat of kittens. Does he like? Does, does he have like a, a hand moment where his hand comes out of the pit of kittens, yeah, holding into the kittens? His hand is like, Ooh. and then <laughs> one thing is you just see like him, like quicksand <laughs> getting lower and lower. Yeah, yeah. And you see his eye, and then all of a sudden <laughs> the eye gets covered up with fur, and oh then God, you just see oh a, a kitten face, like close up. You know, if, the, if you were writing this on a script, it'd be like close up kitten face goes. <laughs> As Babe McTeague goes, oh my god, that was the, I don't think oh I'm gonna god. sleep tonight. Even even that she's was the most disturbing thing. Ever. Oh my god, and maybe she just shakes it off and goes, Ugh. oh. I don't know. Well, I don't know the context. I don't know the context of who this guy is, but but he, I, I thought it was, he would say something like greasier, like like you wanted pussy, you got it. Yeah, you know what I. I actually do have something written on the board that's like that, but yeah. But oh my god, it's probably funnier. Oh my god! Remember that I was just, I was thinking about when you wrote that um, uh, that script about was it the truancy? Uh, oh, Dicky Hopper. Dicky Hopper, right? Because I was thinking about I was I was pondering what what the hell are we going to talk about uh, in regards to our first podcast t- tonight? And I was like, okay, well. I, I remember thinking about Arrested Development and how that narration, the Ron Howard narration, was like was was a, was a good influence on you for Dickie Hopper. It was just very dry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I came into uh, that, 
you you didn't take TV writing, right? No, I didn't. I didn't. Not that one. Yeah, I remember when I read that and Joan Brooker thought it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and she's like, I mean, I thought it was, I, I was like, man, she's going to think this is really misogynist. Right. Uh, <laughs> and she was just like, "What? where did you come up with? Uh, where'd you come up with marines with tangerines? <laughs> you know, which is supposed to be the dirty movie that uh, that Kate Dennis, his his partner, uh, his was, partner. You know, yeah, she was kind of dishonorably, uh, you know, uh, removed from uh, you duty. Know, she, she probably had like a nice job in the police force or something. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember now. But she was in some dirty movie called uh, Marines with Tangerines. Tangerines. And then there was a sequel. <laughs> there was a sequel called Marines with Tangerines 2. The Nectarine Connection. Okay. Uh, you know, this, this begs the question, right? This is something what? I wonder. This begs the question, right? Where I, I, have, I, I have something that I want to ask you. Like, you, you, have, all, you have a lot of... You have a lot of material laying around, it sounds like. And I guess for Babe Matigue, but you have all these... You, you do have, like, various scripts in, in various stages of completion, right? Don't you? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, some, there's some stuff around. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know what? Some, it's one of the things I learned looking back on the stuff I wrote was that it's like it's only as alive as you make it. So I feel like you have plenty of plenty of material that you've accumulated over the years to... To, to bring to life if you wanted it to, right? It's just it's just a, a matter of just, just you know opening you know getting it out of the box or the or the closet or whatever, and just like, you know reading it again. And you're like, okay, I'll change this over here, change that over there, and maybe adapt it for one we, like one way or another. Yeah, I, I've thought about some of that stuff. I mean, you know, they, I, I'll be honest, not everything that I would you know even some of the stuff I thought was really good. Yeah. I look back on it and I go, ah, that, that was kind of silly. You know, mm. I mean, when it came to like the, the, especially with the TV writing class. Yeah. Like none, none of the people in that, in, in the class knew how to write television. Mm. Like at all. Mm -hmm. And it all, it all showed. Right, I right, mean, right. That, that includes me. Sure. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm not, not to pass on really great stories here, but I, I, I do remember that, uh, uh, said something about working on Alf. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I, I asked her, I was like, what was it like working on Alf? And she said, really good cocaine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Comes out. Um, these things are coming out. Yeah. It's time. She may have been joking. I don't know. <laughs> really good. <laughs> something tells me eh, maybe she wasn't. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, uh, um, uh, what the hell was I saying? Oh, all yeah. The, so uh, all the, for all the, me, all the stuff. The TV writing, yeah, the TV writing thing was like me just trying to learn how to write an episode. Uh, sure. Because it's like it's self-contained and also needs to leave uh, the door open for another episode. Mm, uh, yeah, right. So it's like you're working on continuing character. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, uh you know, that's why I think some of it was a little odd. I mean, I, I drew from a lot of things that were very tropey. Uh, yeah. I had, the, I had the one where the guy was the mayor of the town and he was still in high school, um, which I think actually got turned into a TV show. Like, uh, not that one, but I think somebody no, no, no. actually did something like that. Wait a minute. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, th this was fairly recently, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I think Sabrina watched it and she's like, it's about this guy who becomes the mayor of this town. I th is it the same thing that like, it was this guy who was like just doing it for like, you know, just to BS around and all of a sudden he ends up being mayor of the town. Was it the same? Th was this this? No. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mine though was the guy got, he got kicked out of high school on a technicality. Mm. His girlfriend got pregnant by, so, I don't know. We'll just say everybody on the football team. <laughs> but he's the one who's being he's the one who's being uh, accused of having gotten her pregnant uh even though everybody knows he didn't uh and his best friend is uh his best friend is satan who 
come who comes through his window into his bedroom. Uh, and when he comes in, he's like, you know, he says, I'm like, hey, Danny. And he goes, hi, Satan. How you doing? <laughs> I do remember that. Yes, I remember yeah, this. And he goes, you know, he's like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I can't, you know, I, I got expelled from school. He's like, I, I, I can't go get, you know, like, I don't know what I can do for a job. And, you know, <laughs> Satan just says to him, he's like, hey, why don't you run for mayor? And he goes, we already have a mayor. And he goes, yeah, but he's going to die in like 10 minutes. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, but then again, though it's like like hey, listen, I'm I'm laughing. I don't know if it's because I have a low threshold for for humor at ten thirty seven p.m. after like what like a like a like a like a fifteen hour day, but fifteen hour day. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I don't even care. I, I can't compute numbers right right now. But I mean, the thing is, the point I'm trying to make is when when at least you have, you know, material that 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 you can still that's still there. That's still you know. Regardless of how, look, okay, I'll, I'll put it this way, right? I saw this thing with Scorsese. Um, oh my God, what was he talking about? It was just like, I, I think it was like part of his master class, right? And he was talking about how some of these, some of these, some of these guys that he looked up to would actually, like, in spite of how they felt about the work that they do. Right, people would come up to them and say, "Oh, this is great, this is great," and then they go like, "Oh, that was crap." But that's how they wouldn't maybe not say it all the time, but you know they'd probably feel some sort of resentment, thinking, "Okay, well, why do these people like the work that I don't like at all?" You know, it was just it, it, you know it, it succeeds in, in spite of them. And with that in mind, it's like, how do you how do you go about um, having this stuff, right? That you put work into, or maybe not, you don't put that much work into, but you have fun writing or whatever that you starts piling up. And then at what point do you be like, Holy shit, I really, regardless of how I feel about it, maybe I should think about, you know, going through it. And if not actually producing the damn thing, but editing it enough. So I'm like, I'm still, I'm still a little bit satisfied with it. Hello, I'm here. Yeah, okay. No, <laughs> Sorry, I lost you there. <laughs> oh no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm it's here. Like the line went I, dead. I, 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 it was just like the, I, I, I guess the hanging question was kind of like, all right. Well, at one point, do you be like, okay, do you do you like look past whatever shortcomings you think this stuff has, and you're like, okay, do I even go? Do I go back and try to make it a little better somehow, or do I just, or do I just? Um, say, fuck it. I'm just going to see, I'm just going to see what's there and just put it out there. Maybe, you know, in some, in some form or fashion, right? Like, I mean, you can have these, like you, you can have these scripts that you've written granted that you, you wrote them like years and years ago, but you can still update them to the point where it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a podcast out of this or I'm going to make a, like a radio thing out of this. And maybe, you know, I have my wife animate it and, you know, adapt it to the point where it's like, okay, it's going to be on YouTube. And, I don't care because it's just now I need to get something out there and, and it can be just anything almost. And, and just, you can just put it out. Do you ever have like thoughts like that where it's like, okay, shit, I have to do this. <laughs> I have all this material. <laughs> I have all this material. What the hell am I going to do with it? Basically. Yeah. No, I, you know, it, it does kind of weigh on me that, you know, that, uh, you know, it, 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 it makes for a great supple, uh, like, um, you know, uh, 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 we'll call it like joint reading or so. Mm-hmm. With the the other thing that I I'm working on myself, which is kind of me addressing a lot of that, uh, because I'm sure there's even things from school uh, about me and some others that you, you might not even be kind of aware of when it came to some of the work that we were doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and yeah. it's a lot of it makes me feel very bitter and uh, oh yeah, oh, at the yeah. same time a little guilty. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, you know, uh, it's it's a little frustrating. Yeah, yeah. But I, I I don't know. I just feel like, um, 
like I guess in regards to you, I feel like there I do feel that from you actually. Like there's this whole lot of um not trauma's the word, but definitely like 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 resentment that you feel about this stuff. Um Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but but no, but really though, because it's like but it's, it's and I don't know if we want to talk about this in recording or whatever. I guess you know, just say no easily, and then we can just move on or just wrap up or whatever. But, but it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, just okay. It's like okay, we we you know we lived through that life, and I mean, what I'm doing now is kind of like okay, how do I how do I um, still manifest something that I feel like I can be proud of or or can apply my you know technique or intuition or or whatever towards that i can just show to people i'm like hey you know what this isn't that bad and it's and it's and it's sad because it's sort of i mean eh, it, scorsese i think recently said talk, well, i don't know if he said this recently but he, he talked about how loathsome it was to him that all this stuff that people produce nowadays is referred to as content you know when we were when you know when i was growing up i didn't think of this as content maybe it was a maturity thing but it was sort of like you live in your own, you sort of, you go into these different worlds and it wasn't just something to occupy your time with in a way. It was something like for me, it was something, I don't know if you felt like this too, Sean, in regards to like, you know, movies, especially in general, but you know, these aren't just, you know, just escapes that when I was growing up, I don't know if I still feel this way. Sometimes I certainly do, but when you were growing up and you you were exposed to, to, Yes, you know this kind of media and films almost all the time, and then you when you start learning that you could actually start doing it and contribute to the conversation or the world building or whatever that um, it, it it becomes trivialized. I think when you just refer to it, you know, when when somebody just refers to it as content, we have to get we have to get content for this app or content for this thing or or the other. Whereas, you know, I think it becomes more immersive than what that suggests. I don't know where I'm going with this. It was just, it was just one of those <laughs> things where it's like, you know, no, seriously, it's like, it's like, it's like, okay, how do you just, how do you separate kind of like, okay, yeah, what I do, okay, I think of it as art, maybe, proudly, maybe it's art, maybe it's not, who cares, but I think of it as this thing that I do that makes me just escape into some place and makes it more than just, you know, content. I may feel I may feel content doing it, but at the same time, it's like you know how do you prevent the feelings of being trivialized, right? Of like not wanting to give in to whatever you know bullshit kind of maybe superficial standards that you know corporate whatever says. Okay, you're a content creator. This is content. Um, the people aren't referred to as artists anymore. They're just you know they're just creatives, right? Mm. And yeah, it's like it's like you can't refer to them as an artist. Maybe that's too weighty, right? It's too that's too deep. We need to refer to them as something superficial and accessible, like creatives. Where like they have their own, they wear their own little hats, they do their own little things. But then at the end of the day, we're the one who calls the shots, and then you know they can do whatever they want. And then they go, they go, they're satiated with their money and their you know health insurance, and they can go back to the whatever little hole that they sleep in each night with whatever partner they may have, you know. But where does that end up contributing to like? Me, me looking at me asking the big questions like what does that end up contributing to like you know our i don't know health right it's like you get a sense that when you watch these guys who make these films like even you know back in the day and even the 70s and these guys we talked about earlier with spielberg and all of them um in the 70s 80s given to some extent in the 90s there was a real kind of like maybe this is like a superficial thing but it was it was kind of like there was a real kind of like endeavor that that seemed to be happening especially in the films like from like the 30s and the 40s i mean granted there were still scandals and all that stuff happening right but at the same time you watch some of that stuff from back then and it felt really feels like novels are on the screen you know it just felt like like the details were so sumptuous sometimes that that it ended up giving it giving you know the works you know the films a different like an extra layer of life that maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm too jaundiced to see in movies nowadays. <laughs> but you, you no, know what I'm no, talking about. I, I I will agree with you. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, you know, we, I know we talk about, or at least I'm rambling on about, like trying to find like meaning, um, in the work that we do nowadays, right? Especially when things can be so like you know overtly kind of you know overtly kind of chummy, but 
secretly probably kind of, you know, not, um, and more cynical about it than anything. I don't know. How do you yeah. like, how do you, how, like, how do we go about like combating this? And, and the reason I, I guess the reason I'm bringing this all up is because, you know, we're, I think we both are a little bit is that we do feel kind of like mired or stuck or whatever and trying to get the, like the, the trying to put the key in the ignition and just get, hoping that the engine turns on a little bit and hoping that the car moves a little bit forward, right. With what we do. I don't know if that's too, like, if that's too, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, is that too much of a sugar coat? Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sort of find some sort of, um, way of articulating it. No, I, I, I would, it's, that's the question. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, I, you know, the, the, what I find kind of uh, humorous as a side here is we're getting into the heavy stuff, like, uh, hmm. uh, like you know, th- this far in. Uh, sure. It's almost like you had to warm up a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's me. I'm yeah. trying to find that balance, like, personally. Mm-hmm. I have actually, this is really interesting, you're not even the only one that I speak to about this kind of thing. But mm. I would say you probably are one of the people who talks to me about it in a more level way. Oh, okay. Whereas there are, there is at least, you know, I would say that there are other people that, that kind of make it seem like they're trying to use whatever juice I have to help them get their engine going. Yeah. And I'm like... I, I, for me, the the uh, you know, and go not where uh, we know not where was a great yep. way for me to kind of like break off and just be like, ah, there's something still here. Yes, uh, yes, yes. So, I, can, I concur know, with that a thousand percent. Yes, yes, yes. I, I didn't want to wait this long to have to get back doing this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, really, it's almost like exercising, and I kind of. Before yes. Completely atrophy. I'm trying to find some voice in this. And, you know, I kind of said before, I was like, you know, this whole like non narrative project thing. It's yes. just been kind of like exercises for me to try and get this voice built back. Um, the it steps does... after that gets a little more difficult, though. <laughs> no, but you know what? I agree a thousand percent with regards to the exercising part. It does feel like you're working some sort of muscle. Um, like you know, inward skill or muscle group, a creative muscle group or something when you actually do this kind of stuff. And uh, God, I guess we're so lazy, right? Because I mean, can you imagine actually, you know, people that we went to school with who actually, I sometimes feel very ashamed of myself because, you know, I've actually worked with people that we went to school with on a production that was just miserable. And these people sort of tough through it. Well, I was like, this is horrible, right? First of all, I can't even understand the damn script. And I was and I, and I was like one of like the only ones who like you know in like in in a, in a in a very open meeting um, said to the director and writer of this project like I don't understand your script and I've read this thing a few times I'm, I'm, I I mentioned this to you before and here I was with people all around me who were just was doing this job just to, just to do a job they're not doing they're not doing, that's the impression I got that they don't want to question what it you know overtly is because you know you're deferring to to the director and i've never ever seen the final project of this thing that i worked on but it just was sort of maybe it's the trauma of working regardless of what of what field you're in because you know i think i i don't know if i'm too um uh idealistic but i feel like people do want to put their best foot forward most of the time depending on the person right and 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 they will gladly help you if they're even if they get if they even they get a smidge of something close to what they have in mind for themselves, right? Just a little little tiny smidge of like of of if they even move like one one centimeter closer to making like you know their movie that they want to make or something, right? And they're working on a crew, and they're gosh darn it, they're just so happy to be there because maybe they know how hard it is to get on this crew otherwise, right? You know they will help you. But the thing is, humans are not just a one-time only deal. They're a complete package. So these people, they may be shy to tell you some things, but they, it's not like they don't have opinions on stuff. 
And Sean, I'm telling you, I read the script a few fucking times and I did not understand it. And I was the only one who told this dude, dude, like, like, I do not get your script. And should I, should I have kept my mouth shut? Should I have just sucked it out? Work this, work, work, work this, work this god awful production, and then just you know just hung on for the next one and for the next one and maybe meet a celebrity or something, and then build mm-hmm. connections <laughs> and then and then you know murk my way up from the murky depths as it were to to things that are a bit more substantial. All the while, driving myself crazy. Was that better than the life the life path that I ended up having so far? Where you know I work at Amazon for about like almost eleven hours, you know, for four days a week, and and but at the end of the day, I can just be like, okay, this is my work life, and this is my home life, and the rest of my life, and I have that sweet freedom to do what I want in between, you know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe 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 the first path was better, and the second path was a loser. Maybe I'm calling myself a loser in the roundabout way. I'm not sure, but it's still kind of it's it's very it's it can drive you mad thinking about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? But before this becomes a problem, I gotta tell you, my phone, my uh, computer is about to die. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you want to do you want to wrap up for now, and then we'll just we continue? Probably some of it. should, because yes. I don't know where the plug is. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, huh. So I don't know what the hell this is that we just did for like a few hours. <laughs> uh, I guess this is the Schwan cast. <laughs> Oh my god. We'll have to figure oh, it gonna out. Be re- that's going to be renamed. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, just so you do know, I also I did a I did a test podcast the other day. It's about 7 minutes long. Oh shit. Uh yeah, it's uh, called 8 w- 8 ways to Sunday and it's about the uh the octopus from uh, Aquaman. Okay. <laughs> where where yeah. where did you did you upload this somewhere? Where is this? I didn't upload it yet. I'll I'll send All it right. over to you. Please, please do. Yeah. Please do. Now we're going to start talking yeah. about... Well, I mean, you know what? Can I... Maybe... Uh, what's your percentage on your computer? Can you tell me how long you have before we 3%. have to wrap up? Oh, my God. All right. Well, really quick. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, in that case... <laughs> you should have gotten your plug, you asshole. Um, in that case, I guess should say that... Great time talking with you, buddy. Um, things aren't looking... Yeah, sometimes they can look pretty damn dark, but, you know... I think we can just pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and, and just keep on going a little bit. Yeah. But I think as, as long as we just, you know, keep in mind to listen to that voice inside us, the, the you know what I mean? The intuition part of it or, or, or God or, or whatever. Cause I feel like, and you learn stuff along the way. So there's that. So I think I'm going to leave yeah. it like that. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too hokey. No, no, it's uh, I agree with you. Uh, do you want to do another one? Another uh, recording one day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. You oh, have no, a good this night. This was great. Yeah, this was really great. And, uh, you know, everybody out there, watch out for the hemo goblins. I'm terrified. Ooh. I don't know about you. <laughs> okay. Coming this Halloween, the hemo goblins, which is probably yeah. not a, it's not a scary movie in the traditional sense, but no, it's still no. pretty terrifying. Yeah. All right, buddy. All right. Um, yeah, I guess I'll send you a text when this is, uh, when I upload the damn thing. Okay. All right. See you later, man. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.